So my question for us tonight that I want us to be thinking about is, do our bodies really matter to be faithful followers of Jesus? Do our bodies really matter to be faithful followers of Jesus? Does God really care about how I treat my body? Does God care about how I choose to live my physical life here on earth? So before we unpack those questions tonight, I want to tell you about this group called the Gnostics. Uh, They were formed in around the early church in the second century. And the word uh, gnosis means knowledge, and that's where the Gnostics get their names. It means because they believed that you had to um, get this divine knowledge to be saved. They also believed that God didn't create anything in the physical world. Everything in the physical world, they believed another God created. They believed that humans were this spark or this illumination from God. Humans were the spark from God, but their bodies, their physical bodies, were a tomb or a cage to be escaped. And they believed that to be freed, to experience salvation, they had to be freed from the physical. And so that doesn't leave much surprise that they did not believe that Jesus was fully God. They believed that Jesus was special, but they did not believe Jesus was fully God. So in summary, the Gnostics spent their whole lives trying to escape the earth, trying to to escape the earth and finding no hope that comes with the incarnation of Jesus. So the word incarnation is used to describe the belief that Jesus was fully God, but yet fully man. And we see this explained in John 1, starting in verse 1. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then a little bit further down, in verse 14, it says, The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. So as Christians, right, as followers of Jesus, we believe the incarnation, the fact that Jesus was God and fully man is essential. It is necessary to be Christian, to believe that, right, to the Christian faith. So what happened to Gnostics? Why don't we see First Gnostic Church down the road from us? It's because the early church fathers quickly declared Gnosticism as heresy because they, thankfully, were fighting for the fact that we believe that Jesus is fully man and fully God. Okay, so history, lesson over there, but Gnosticism sounds a little crazy, right? It's interesting that they think that... um, God didn't create the physical world. Because if you've spent any time in Genesis 1, you know that God created Adam out of the dust, right? And he declared Adam, his creation, good. And Adam was a human being. God declared him good. And God made man and woman in his image, in the image of God. He created them, right? So human beings are good. So, we see that our bodies matter to God. And Gnosticism is still alive and well today, rather whether we believe it or not. Because we ask this question, do our bodies really matter? Do our physical bodies really matter? Is our faith, can our faith be all spiritual and be in the spiritual realm Does it matter what we do with our bodies? But I want us to think about this. To ignore our physical bodies is an insult to the incarnation. To ignore our physical bodies is an insult to the incarnation. So let's turn to Romans 12, 1 through 2, and let's see what Paul has to say about why our bodies matter. What do we do with our bodies? Romans 12, 
starting in verse 1. It will be up on the screen for you to follow along as well. It says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is true worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is his good pleasing and perfect will so y'all paul is acknowledging here that our bodies matter our bodies matter because we are called to live as living sacrifices he, paul doesn't say offer your soul or your spirituality as a sacrifice he says offer your body and again i mentioned this earlier, but I think a lot of times we think that we can just have a spiritual faith and what we do with our bodies don't matter. We can live of the world with our body as long as we're taking care of the spiritual things on the side, right? We think we can separate the two, but y'all, that's a lie. And I've been in seasons where I have tried this, where I've tried to do all the spiritual things right over here, but then I'm following the ways of the world with my body. And there is tension there. We can't live like that. Scott McKnight says this, what we do with our bodies shows what we value in our soul. What we do with our bodies show what we value in our soul. And another way of saying this that might sound a little bit familiar, more familiar, is say with your body what you want to say with your heart. Say with your body what you want to say with your heart. If you've come to Vista for any amount of time, you've probably heard Jordan, our worship pastor, say this. And that's because our bodies show and express what is going on in our hearts and in our spirits. Okay, when we are here and worship together, if you are ready to celebrate, we get to raise our hands and express that we are celebrating and praising the Lord, right? Or maybe you're coming in a posture ready to receive, and you need to receive what the Lord has for you, or you need help with the situation. And so we open our hands like this in worship to use our bodies to show what we're feeling in our hearts. Or maybe you're in a really heavy season, and your body feels heavy, and so you just need to sit down during worship and pray and allow your body to express that your soul is feeling heavy in this season. Okay, because our bodies show what we feel in our hearts and in our souls. So we, we can't separate the two. Um, and a lot of times when we talk about this, we're talking specifically about worship here, but Paul's command to present our bodies as sacrifices isn't just to do it in a sanctuary or in an auditorium in a church building. He is saying to do it with our day-to-day -day lives, to go out and use our bodies in worship in everything that we're doing. And y'all, this would have been a really radical idea for his original audience as well because they were used to going to the temple for worship. They were used to having to go to the temple as their place of worship because the temple was where the Spirit of God was. But now because of Jesus, he's trying to help them understand that because of Jesus, the Spirit of God is now in you, and you get to be a temple, and the Spirit of God lives in you, and so now your whole life is an act of worship. You don't have to just go to the temple to worship and experience God's presence. Your whole life is an act of worship. And I think we forget that a lot of the times. I think we think worship is reserved here for Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights when you get to come. But our whole lives are meant to be acts of worship. And Paul also talks about sacrifices here because sacrifices was a very normal part of their worship service. Like we're not really, well, we've never made a sacrifice here at the Vista in their terms because sacrifices were killing an animal, right? Blood was shed. Or maybe it was bringing your first fruits, which means bringing the best part of your crop to God. So this was a normal term for them. He's speaking their language, but he's saying this sacrifice 
This is a different sacrifice than you're used to giving. It's your own body. It's your own body that I'm calling you to give as a sacrifice now. So let's notice three things that he's calling us to in this sacrifice. First of all, the sacrifice is to be a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. And that's good news. (laughs) There's no bloodshed anymore in the sacrifice that God is asking us to give. It's a living sacrifice. And we get to see this played out in the symbolism of baptism. When we give our lives to Jesus, when we proclaim that Jesus is our Lord and Savior, we get to proclaim that through the symbol of baptism. And when we are buried under the water, we're putting to death our old life, but we don't get to stay there, right? We're raised up out of the water and get to live on as a living sacrifice. So, The first is living. That's the first type of sacrifice we're supposed to be. And then the second is holy. Paul calls us to be holy in our sacrifice. And holy means to be set apart. To be set apart. And in verse 2, he continues to explain this here, that we are to be set apart. We can't look like the rest of the world. And that matters in the way we act with our bodies. Because remember, our bodies is a reflection of where our heart and soul is at. So our bodies have to be made holy, and then we're renewing our mind and fixing our mind on the Spirit so that we can act and look more like Jesus in our lives. Because Jesus is the ultimate example of how to live a holy life here on earth. And I think sometimes... We forget that Jesus was truly and fully human. He was completely relatable to us here on earth. In Hebrews 4, 14 through 16, it tells us, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we put Profess, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. So y'all, Jesus is able to empathize with us in every way. He was a human. He had a human body. He bled, and he sweat, and he cried, And he rejoiced. He was tempted. So he can relate to us. And that is pretty special. But he sets the tone for what holiness is supposed to look like. And we're never going to be perfect, guys. But Jesus is perfect on our behalf. And we should be striving to look more and more like Jesus with our lives, with our bodies every day. Day. And then the next is we're called to be pleasing, a pleasing sacrifice. So remember one of the ways that people offered sacrifices were through their first fruits. They took their crops, the very best that they had, and they took it to the temple and offered it to the Lord. And so that is what we are also called to do with our own bodies, is we should be wanting to give the best that we have to God. Our sacrifice of our body, we should be proud to give it. We should be working hard to give the best that we have. And in some seasons, that's going to be better than others. I mean, you think about it. In some seasons, the farmers had better crops than others, right? They had, sometimes it wasn't a rainy season, and they didn't produce the most beautiful crops, but they still brought the best they had to offer. So we're called to bring the best that we have to offer in every season to the Lord. And I love what one of the early church fathers, John Christenstum, says. His name is really hard to say. Um, er, Prevent your eye from looking at something evil. It has become a sacrifice. Do not let the tongue say something shameful. It has become a an offering. Do not let the hand perform a lawless action. It 
has become a whole burnt offering. Yet these things are not enough. We must also perform good works. Let the hands give alms. Let the mouth bless those who abuse. Let the hearing devote itself continually to listening to divine speech. For sacrifice has nothing impure about it. Sacrifice is the first fruits of all our actions. Let us make a sacrifice to God of the first fruits of our hands, our feet, mouth, and all the other members of our body. And I think he just puts this so beautifully here that, guys, our bodies do matter because they are supposed to be a pleasing sacrifice to the Lord. What we do physically matters with our hands and with our feet and with our eyes and ears and mouth. It matters to God. So Jesus sacrificed his life by dying on the cross to redeem our lives, and that includes our physical bodies. In the Liturgy of the Ordinary by Tish Harrison Warren, um, it's a super short, fun read, but she says, in Gnosticism, teeth brushing and shower taking and nail clipping would simply be a burdensome hindrance to the soul's pure engagement with the spiritual life. But in Christ, these bodily tasks are a response to God's creative goodness. He himself took on the flesh in order to redeem us in our bodies. And in so doing, he redeemed embodiment itself. So yes, we should engage with Christ with our minds and with our souls, but we also have to engage with Christ with our bodies because our bodies connect us to Jesus in a really unique way because he was also human. He, God, our creator, by the way we worship with our bodies, gets to show him that we are thankful for the way he created us and the way he intentionally knit us together in our mother's womb. So I want to challenge us tonight to think about the ways that we can be better stewards of our bodies and offer the Lord a sacrifice with our bodies. We're going to continue to have this conversation um, over the semester. This is just grazing the surface here. Uh, But we are going to get to talk about it more, and then we're going to talk about it in our small groups this next week. So I want you to be thinking about practical ways how you can offer your body as a living, pleasing, and holy sacrifice to God. Maybe that means the way that you're speaking. Maybe you need to think about the ways that you're using your mouth. Are you using it in ways to honor the kingdom? And are you using it in ways to encourage the people around you? Or are you using it in ways to tear people down? Think about the ways that you're using your mouth. Are you using your ears in helpful ways to listen to things that are going to encourage you and bless you? Are you using it in ways that are hurting you? Are you using your hands to bless people or using them to be selfish? I want us to think about ways where maybe we can be physically healthier and take care of our bodies. Maybe it's committing to eating out less or doing things that get us physically active. Maybe we need to think about confessing to someone that we're struggling with sexual sin and using our bodies in ways that God didn't intend us to. Or maybe we need our bodies to use our bodies to get up and serve the homeless community by getting involved in one of the local food pantries in our community. Y'all, there's tons of ways that we can think about how we're using our bodies as sacrifices and as acts of worship to God. But whatever the Lord is calling you to, whatever he's laying on your heart right now to think about your body and transform your body as a living sacrifice. As Christians, we don't have to be ashamed of our bodies. Instead, we are invited to embrace our physical bodies because Jesus died on the cross for you, for that body, so that you can experience new life and you are made in the image of God. So let's 
present our lives as living, holy, and pleasing sacrifices to the one who created us. Let's pray together. Lord, we are so thankful for a creative God that knit us together so intentionally in our mother's womb. God, we know that you care about your creation and that you care about what we do with our bodies. So Lord, teach us how to be better sacrifices. Teach us how to care about our bodies. Lord, we love you and we're thankful for you. We're thankful for Jesus dying on the cross for our sins and offering us redemption. It's in your name, amen.